Good afternoon. We want to welcome everyone to our legislative and priority briefing for February of 2021. As a reminder, since everybody is on Zoom, we do ask that you keep your microphones muted. And if you have questions, please feel free to use the chat feature and we're happy to address them. So today we're going to be talking about a variety of issues but most predominantly local, state, and federal issues that we are watching as well as priorities. And then we'll speak for a few minutes about FB Act, which is our action request team. So locally, um, we have a couple of issues on the horizon that we are paying attention to. Um, as a lot of people are already aware, the Forest Preserve District is considering and talking about doing a property tax increase. So for the average homeowner, we're looking at about $50 per year additional to the forest, or I'm sorry, $15 per homeowner increase. And the average homeowner typically um, on their property tax bill, they pay about $50 per year to the forest reserve. So early estimates believe that um, this increase would generate around $40 million. Um, it would need board of commissioners as well as the public approval. Now, Cook County Farm Bureau, in an effort to learn more about our members' opinions and our members' thoughts on the issue, did complete a micro viewpoint survey. And the results were just compiled this week. And it appears to be a, a really even split with our voting membership of whether they support or do not support the increase. So we're gonna continue monitoring it and take that information and continue to educate our members and educate um, our committee members and our board of directors regarding this issue, and then be prepared to um, survey again and see what kind of um, response we receive, which will direct future engagement should the increase be pushed forward. Um, the second issue that we're watching is government funding. And with the situation right now, I mean, we're meeting via Zoom. So we know that COVID has impacted how we're doing our day-to-day -day business as opposed to us having this briefing in person. And we know it's gonna have a lasting impact on our communities and especially our governments and how are they funding government operations. So that same micro viewpoint survey asked about how we should fund local governments and it asked a variety of options from hiring freeze to cutting programs to a property tax increase. And in contrast to the forest preserve question, which was asking about a property tax increase, no one responding to the survey wanted a property tax increase. So that's part of the reason we are doing some education and monitoring on these issues, just to make sure that the information is out there and to make sure that members are aware of what's going on and feel more comfortable. And so locally, we're looking into a couple of programs. Um, we are working on a pollinator program with the Brookfield Zoo. And we're really looking forward to it. We'll have a local component and then we're, as long as we're able to meet in public, we are hoping to have a larger scale pollinator enhancement and education program with the zoo. And then one of the things that I am most excited about and our board is most excited about is our rural urban nutrient exchange program. And that's gonna be conducted in combination with the water district, Fulton County and Cook County Farm Bureaus. And we will actually learn more about nutrient reduction strategies at the Fulton County M MWRD site. And then we're gonna take those scientists and those members up to Cook County to learn about phosphorus and everything at the Stickney plant. And then meet and have a conversation to find out if there's local research that we can be doing right here in Cook County. And so we're really looking forward to that opportunity. Um, we are continuing with our legislative tours. And each year we take members from our county board and their staff out and we tour different farms and agribusiness locations. And this last year we transitioned to smaller scale activities to allow for more intimate conversation and everything. And what we are seeing with that is we're getting a more robust conversation and a very honest conversation at that. Um, so we are looking forward to returning those. Right now we are meeting with legisl legislators via Zoom and it is a tremendous tool, but we're looking forward to being back in person when it's safe to do so. And one of the exciting things we are working on from a policy point is Illinois Farm Bureau right now does not have an 
urban agriculture policy. There's policy on organic um, agriculture, there's policy on um, food labeling, there's policy on specialty crops, but there's nothing summarizing urban agriculture. And as a county in a very urban area, it seems like this is the perfect fit for our governmental affairs team and for our board of directors to develop policy. So we are beginning down that path to create Illinois Farm Bureau's first ever urban policy for our policy book. On the state side, we've had some interesting changes and I think that it's incumbent before we even talk about priorities to have a conversation about the changes with leadership. Um, as many people are aware of, Don Harmon was elected to his first full term as Senate president. He was um, elected as a partial term when Senator Cullerton stopped down. So this would be his first full term. Um, Senator Dan McConchie was elected to his first term as Senate Minority Leader. Um, as you may be aware, Senator Bill Brady stepped down um, and Senator McConchie was appointed, was selected by his caucus and then formally elected. And then on the House side, Representative Chris Welch was elected to his first term as Speaker of the House after um, Speaker Madigan withdrew his campaign for his, um, what would have been his 39th, or I'm sorry, his 36th year as Speaker. He is still a member of the House of Representatives. And there are still questions about whether he will stay in the House of Representatives or will he resign his seat? And that's still left to be determined. And then Representative Durkin was reelected as House Minority Leader. Now, all four of these individuals have been involved with agriculture and are aware of agriculture. Um, Speaker Welch is adopted and his adopted county, which is Whiteside as well as Cook County, has met with him, has talked to him, has had him out to farms. So his knowledge is very extensive. Um, Representative Durkin has received the Friend of the Farm, the Friend of Agriculture Award numerous times through Activator for his voting record. And we've had a lot of great conversations with him. Um, Senator Herman is also elected or also um, adopted through the Adopt a Legislator program. And he too has received our Friend of Agriculture Award numerous times. Um, Senator McConchie is newer to the Senate, but at this time it appears that he's open to ideas, he's open to agriculture, and we've had conversations and have met with him. So we're looking forward to building that relationship. So as new leaders have been elected and the new General Assembly was seated in January, we're seeing the formation of different committees and different task force, and we will reach out to and work with those committees. Um, but we will see different leadership changes within them. And the House most recently did their House rules. And they really, a notable difference is they're very much so empowering committee chairs and giving the committee chairs the option of moving legislation forward or not, which is a change from the House Rules Committee of the past, which would hold and sit on legislation that individuals didn't want move, moving forward in the process. So it's going to be interesting and it's still very early in the process. So we'll learn how it works and work within it. Um, looking to our state legislative priorities, we've divided them into a couple of broad categories. And so we'll touch on those. Um, the first category is livestock. And being in Cook County Farm Bureau and in Cook County, we don't have a tremendous number of what would be considered traditional livestock operations. We have a lot of equine but we do not typically have large dairies or large feedlots or um, hog houses. And those larger facilities are governed through the process for the Livestock Management Facilities Act. And it has been a priority of Farm Bureau for numerous years to maintain that balanced process and maintain it as a state process done through the Illinois Department of Agriculture. And we will continue to fight for that and advocate for it. In the area of general agriculture, really this, this one catches a lot of things and several of them are very important to Cook County Farm Bureau and local farmers. And the first one is legislation supporting limited liability on agritourism. And we have a lot of agritourism activities in Cook County. So it's very important that that liability is limited and that we're able to protect that. Um, as all of us realized, 
and thought we had really good internet, but we're learning that high speed broadband maybe isn't as available as we once thought. And it's, we want to support the expansion and the enhancement of it while protecting local property rights and local owners of property. Um, something else that came really into focus for the past year is mental health. And within Illinois, we have the opportunity to have the Illinois Farmer Mental Health Assistance Program. And we want to continue that program and continue supporting and providing resources. And an issue that was brought forward by our members was the thought that at some point the Illinois Department of Agriculture and Illinois EPA could be merged. And that's a tremendous concern because we want a viable and independent Illinois Department of Agriculture. So continuing on with our state priorities, they, again, we broke them down into renewable energy and finances. And in the area of renewable energy, we want to make sure that renewable fuels remain a possible solution for reducing emissions. And this is incredibly important. As we switch to federal, we're going to see really a, a renewed effort in the area of climate change. And renewable fuel, fuels provide a option for reducing emissions. So we want to make sure they are viable. Uh, we also want to support those markets and that's um, ethanol and soybean based biodiesel and we want to encourage that use of it. In the area of financing, um, one of the most important things and on all of our members minds is the current tax provisions and we want to maintain the agricultural sales tax exemption for seed, feed, fertilizers, chemicals and equipment. And the idea behind it is really certain inputs right now under current law are not taxed at the time of purchase. Instead, they are taxed at the final sale. And it prevents double taxation. And an aspect of it has been in Illinois law since 1933, and it was updated in 1970. And our neighboring states, and most of the states in, in the nation have a similar provision. And it's really the idea that because we tax at the final sale, we're preventing double taxation through it. Moving on to our um, Department of Agriculture, we want to make sure that we have adequate funding for key Illinois Department of Agriculture programs. And one of the things that, um, because of Cook County's property tax system, it's not immediately applicable, is the farmland assessment law. But many of our farmers also own property outside of Cook County, and if it's agricultural property, it is assessed using the farmland assessment law. And we want to make sure that legislators and our neighbors are educated about the importance of the farmland assessment law. A couple of items of interest that we are working on as a state is our nutrient loss reduction strategy. And this dovetails beautifully into our rural urban exchange program. And it's actually a priority of Illinois Farm Bureau and farmers throughout. And we want to make sure that we provide the leadership and participation from our farmer members and our county farm bureaus to maximize our efforts on the area of nutrient loss. And we have made progress in four areas, education and outreach, support of best management practices, supporting our farmers, and demonstrating the progress towards the long-term goals. And this strategy, it's a voluntary strategy, but it really came from concerns about having our hands forced. So what is better than having your hands forced is to take a voluntary program, encourage farmers, and then show that that program is working. And that's exactly what this strategy is designed to do. So for this year, Farm Bureau has committed over $150,000 to the Nutrient Stewardship Grant Program. And 28 county Farm Bureaus, including Cook County Farm Bureau, will be working together on 21 projects throughout the state. And we have just one of those projects. But it's really cool to see county Farm Bureaus and local farmers working together and coming up with creative activities and creative programs and processes to reduce nutrients. Transitioning towards our federal side, and this area I think for most of us is probably one of the most interesting and also um, areas we're keeping eyes on. 
And what we did is we have some watch list items and on it includes climate change. And what we saw was an executive order from the Biden administration that gave us the indication that climate change was going to be a priority. And so we are seeing it in the national policy. We're seeing it in local. And it, we believe that we will see legislation down the road regarding climate change. So as we keep our eyes on it, we want to remind our legislators that less than 10% of total US greenhouse gas emissions actually stem from agriculture. And that agriculture is a net sink for carbon emissions. And through our renewable fuels, ethanol and biodiesel, we have been able to reduce carbon emissions. And ultimately for us to continue down that path and continue to reduce emissions in this area, especially, we need to invest in research and innovation and support that. So another item that we are keeping an eye on is the Navigal Waters Protection Rule. And as many of you may remember, this replaced the 2015 Waters of the U.S. Rule. Um, and it was something that Farm Bureau had worked very hard on and had really it was interesting. It was really a credit to the organization, a credit to our farmers to see them pull together and um, convey why the 2015 rule was such an overreach. And as a result of that effort, what we saw is the new rule. And the rule ultimately does not change who oversees permanent waterways, our navigable waterways. They rem remain part of US EPA's and the Army Corps of Engineers jurisdictions, but it makes it so states can go ahead and enforce their own laws as well. Um, and it gives farmers and landowners the clarity and common sense approach. Now, we believe that this rule probably will be on the target list, might not necessarily be on the target list for 2021, but definitely for 2022. So we need to continue to convey why this rule works, why it is improvement over WOTUS, and that navigable permanent waters are different than the streams that crop up in farm fields or the ditches that run along our properties. Um, regulatory reform is also one of these aspects. And it's something that people are concerned about. Farmers, everyone, we welcome clarity. And we benefit from a process that allows for earlier input and greater input. And we want to see that. Now, not reflected on the screen, but an item that we are watching is the Tax Cut and Job Act provision. And that includes the stepped up basis. And this act um, was put into place under the Trump administration. And it appears that it will be a target down the road. So we are going to work to protect those items. Um, and to continue the efforts made by this um, act. So transitioning just a touch, we've talked about what our priorities are and the issues we're keeping an eye on. And I think one of the things that when I hear it comes to mind is that's great. Now, what the heck can I do? How can I help? And Farm Bureau has a really cool program. It's our FBA program where members on occasion are asked to contact their legislators about a priority issue. We do not do this consistently. We do not do it all the time. It's only on our priority issues. And we provide you with all the contact information and we provide you with speaking points. And actually, if you'll text FARM to 52886 to sign up, you can also use that number to engage. And whether it's sending it through the phone system or sending an email, but 52886 and text FARM to it will sign you up and gives you all the tools that you need. And then obviously, we're here to help in any way that we can. If you have questions or concerns, we're happy to help, but this is a way for us to streamline it. And it's really, it's a really cool process. And we try very hard not to overuse it because we realize that everybody has very limited time. And so we only send out action requests for the priority issues and those issues that are rooted in our policy book. So that really is a quick wrap up of what we have. Um, Kelly, do we have any questions in the chat before we conclude? 
We do not, no questions. Wonderful. Then we want to thank everybody for spending their afternoon, their quick lunch hour with us. Um, if Cook County Farm Bureau, Kelly or myself can be of any assistance, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Um, our number is there on the screen and of course our email is there as well. Thank you very much and have a great day.